Hi, good morning. I am Dr. Rohit Malpe and my friend Dr. Raj Mishra. We both passed the NBA Emergency Medicine examination theory as well as practical. Our practical were conducted on, uh, conducted on 14 September 2021. The objective of making this paper is to get the idea about new OSCE based practical examination to the exam going to the NBA Emergency Medicine student. These were the pattern during our examination. You have to check with the current guideline, but I hope this PPT will definitely help to little bit to get the idea about the new OSCE pattern, how the questions frame, uh, how in which manner the questions asked, and the what answer expected. So, uh, thank you, National Board Examination in Medical Sciences, for conducting such universal crystal clear exam and maintaining the standard of examination. So without wasting any time, we will uh, let's begin. The first question, how will how will you assess the collapsed person? The image were given during the examination. So in this you can write, first, uh, you have to write the answer in very fast and in a uh, very short manner. Okay. Uh, like you have to write like check, check scene safety, check response, activate the emergency system, then check pulse and breathing simultaneously, not more than 10 seconds. Then come back to uh, second question. Mention any six high quality CPR. You can write over there, push hard and fast. And then red should be 100 to 120 beats per minute. Depth AP diameter one third uh, or five centimeter or two inches. Minimize the minimize the interruption less than 10 second. Allow chest to recoil. Ratio of chest compression to breathing 30 to 2. Don't hyperventilate the patient. Change the compression every two minutes after two minutes or as soon as the compressor get fatigued. Then come back to third question. How will how will you initiate the CPR? The person allowed to lie down, supine on hard surface, portion of the hand at lower one third of the sternum map at the memory line connection. Dominant hand placed over the area or the landmark as told, and the other hand place over the do other dominant hand. Keep elbow and shoulder straight. Lean over the person's body and start CP high quality CPR as mentioned above. Then come back to fourth question. Which non-invasive device can be used to monitor CPR quality? Answer is ETCO2. What is the expected normal value of this device? It is 35 to 45 mmHg. Then move to next question. In this question, one image given below, like uh, the uh, image given below, we are taken from the Google. And uh, this, we are making the memory based question. So a little bit it correlate with the as exact pattern provided by the DNB examinations. So one image was given showing like uh, this kind of the image given that was suggest of the orbital cellulitis and as diagnosis. So here you can make the diagnosis orbital cellulitis. Then move to the second question, six saline feature of the diagnosis that you made. The di our diagnosis is uh, orbital cellulitis and the saline feature you have to write like ophthalmoplegia, pain with eye movement, proptosis, toxic loop, visual disturbances, absent or diminished pupillary reflex, Conjunctival hyperemia and chemosis, raise intraocular pressure that you should, you can measure, and loss of extraocular movement. And then move to the third question: investigation of choice to confirm the diagnosis. In this case, you can do the CT scan of the orbit to make the diagnosis. Then move to the next question. In this question, three, uh, three images were given that were taken from the Tintin ellipse. So for that purpose, you have to go through all the images and charts from the Tintin ellipse book of the recent edition. The for in these images, like a splint were given, and you have to identify. Just you have to write the name only. You don't have to explain anything. Like in this first image, a double sugar tongue splint was uh, was shown. In second, you can write ulnar short gutter splint. In third, that is long arm gutter splint. Then move to the fourth question. In fourth question, the star shaped laceration across the right eyebrow shown in the image was given along with the image and ask the two blocks you will give so you can write supraorbital nerve block and supraorbital supratrochlear nerve block then move to the next question the four wound closure technique then you have to just write down four wound closure technique first like stapler second suturing third biological glue fourth approximation by the steady strip then move to the next question uh, mention the two absorbable and non-absorbable sutures. You can write absorbable like catgut plane, chromic catgut, vicryl, monocryl, non-absorbable, silk, polythene, polyethylene, nylon, polypropylene. 
then move to the next question uh, in this question the one case scenario was given about the runner that ha he had the omitting body temperature elevated the whole clinical scenario fitting in the heat stroke in our examination so as diagnosis we were written the heat stroke uh, diagnosis then as the complication of the diagnosis uh, complication is the rhabdomyolysis then management ask the management of the same the management include remember the management include diagnosis and the treatment so you can diagnose uh, heat stroke by sending the cpk urine myoglobin and treatment hydration you have to give the iv fluid and second is the soda bicarb fourth one is investigation ask so uh, investigation as above like cpk and urine myoglobin then move to the next question the image shown below in the diagram or uh, below in the ppt or like uh, given and as given the clinical scenario that the child having the bite at century and the image given below like so ask question first aid the first aid can be given like carry no right you can rem remember the mnemonic carry no right r i g s t carry carry the patient by transport mode to healthcare facility as early as possible with, don't, without wasting any time and don't allow the patient to walk then no tourniquet, no cut, no cauterization, no wound sucking, no turmeric powder application or do not apply anything. Then in uh, right, R for the reassure the patient that most of the snake bites are non-venomous. You can assure the patient uh, and the best uh, treatment facility available. You can increase the, or boost the confidence of the patient. Then I immo immobilize the whatever the part is beaten. You have to immobilize. GH get to the hospital and T stands for tell doctor what happened during the transport okay then come to the second point two things to avoid uh, two things to avoid like no no tourniquet no cut no cotization no wound sucking no uh, turmeric powder and two drugs that can be given first anti venom second neostigmine then move to the seventh question then seventh question the one case scenario was given about the pregnant woman having abdominal pain omitting BSL was given 190 milligram per deciliter etc etc and ask the diagnosis the diagnosis in that question our diagnosis was dk diabetic ketoacidosis <coughs> note in pregnancy you have to <coughs> see the dk criteria second one investigation to diagnose it you can do the bedside vbg urine ketone sugar blood ketone in that beta hydroxy beta you can check for that and blood sugar level as well <coughs> in third question the most important treatment the one most important treatment is you have to hydrate the patient very well that is IV fluid 1 liter week you can give over the 30 minutes or 1 hour according to the guidelines and fourth one electrolyte check before starting of the treatment you can write directly potassium then move to the next question in question number 8 the case scenario was given about the person traveling too high and started having breathlessness and altered sensorium etc etc and asked diagnosis in that case our diagnosis were Yes, like H A C E high altitude cerebral edema. The MRI given and asked finding of the MRI. We, we can move to the MRI. Here MRI marking showed swelling and the hyper intense posterior body and splenia of the corpus callosum. That is the answer you have to write based on the MRI. <coughs> Third, ask how to prevent it. You can uh, give the dexamethasone on 6 mg tablet. And in fourth, how to treat before reaching the hospital. Immediately you have to stop, stop the ascent further, then stop, then start descent immediately, give oxygen if possible, give acetazolamide that is Rimox tablet 250 mg and dexamethasone 6 mg tablet. But remember gold standard is high HBOT, hyperbaric oxygen therapy at hospital. Then move to the next question. In this question, one image given and x-ray given showing the distal tibia fibula fracture and in that case ask the Gastello Anderson classification of the image. So in this you have to uh, revise the Gastello Anderson classification like class 1, 2, 3, 3A, B, C. Okay. Uh, then second question ask open fracture management in the ED. First like immobilization, then TT prophylaxis as well as tetanus immunoglobulin you can give based on the wound. Adequate analgesia, antibiotic prophylaxis, high volume, low pressure irrigation with 0.9% NSL. Do not use the high pressure irrigation. 
surgical stabilization within 6 hour of the injury as ot definitely ot management then move to the next question in this question one image given as below the case scenario is also given about the fall and one image given below and ask the diagnosis uh, the diagnosis in this image is the achilles tendon rupture the clinical test done in ed is the thompson thompson test the radiological test to diagnose we can do the mri the management in the ed if the patient is not feeling for the surgery then remember apply below knee slab in plantar flexion okay then move to the next slide one case scenario was given about the chest pain improve on leaning forward and ecg given and ask the diagnosis you can see the ecg over here okay in this uh, ecg the st segment is elevated globally and pr segment depressed globally with tachycardia is there so these changes suggest of the pericarditis okay acute pericarditis then most likely diagnosis you can write down the acute pericarditis third patient returned to the ed after two days with worsening of the symptom and 2d echo done the video was, video was given in the exam and asked the echo finding and the diagnosis so this is the video this four chamber view of the heart under 2d echo in this uh, in this video you can see the pericardial effusion that is collection of the fluid around the pericardium and collapse of the right atrium and right ventricle so based on this our diagnosis is the pericardial effusion okay then move to the next question question number 12 the one case scenario was given of the that was suggested of the pulmonary embolism that you have to read the clinically how to get the idea about the based on the clinical just start, how will uh, uh, get the pulmonary embolism so our diagnosis what pulmonary embolism in that case and ask the one specific 2d co finding so 2d co finding of the pulmonary embolism, there are 8 to 10 findings you have to remember like left ventricle d shape left ventricle in short axis rrv dilatation right ventricular sexual pressure more than 42 but specific you can write the maconel sign that is the global rv dysfunction with the apical sparing or you can write down 60 60 sign in this case the tr pressure gradient less than or equal to 60 mmhg and pulmonary acceleration time that is pat less than or equal to 60 millisecond and in our next question the ctp images given and ctp image given and ask what is it so here you can see the dark color thrombus in main pulmonary trunk that is called as saddle thrombus okay in fourth question if the cardiac arrest occur which specific drug you can use the answer is alteplase 50 mg iv given over two to three minutes then resume the cpr for the 15 minutes if no roc then resume uh, then give this alteplase 50 mg iv bolus again over two to three minutes then resume the cpr for 15 minutes if no roc then you can declare the patient Death. so you have to give the alteplase 50 mg iv over 2 to 3 minutes and again 50 mg iv over 2 to 3 minutes in between you can give the cpr for 15 minutes then move to the next question one case scenario was given about the young woman presenting in er with abdominal pain omitting lmp 40 days back and now hemodynamically unstable etc etc and one uvg video was given and asked the diagnosis here the uvg video was given in this video you can make the ectopic pregnancy that is ruptured so our diagnosis is ruptured ectopic pregnancy and second question er management you can always go through the abcd approach airway and breathing secure the airway oxygenate ventilate in circulation you can take the two large bore iv cannula collect blood sample from the pre-op and blood grouping and cross matching start iv fluid resuscitation if available start blood product immediately and ship the, ship the patient to the ot for the definitive management move to the next question <coughs> in this question one x-ray was given and uh, asked the diagnosis uh, the diagnosis is hydronemothorax you can see air fluid level and hyperlucent area on the left side that is suggest of the pneumothorax and ask uh, x-ray finding you can write two finding air fluid level on the left side hyperlucent area on the left side suggest of pneumothorax er management you can uh, go through the abcd approach air breathing circulation consult chase physician and plan for the icd placement then move to the next question in this question one x-ray was given about the newborn baby and asked newborn baby present to er after the four hour of the birth with breathlessness x-ray finding x-ray given and asked the diagnosis 
in this you can clearly make the CDH that is congenital diaphragmatic hernia on the left side and ask the management you can go through the ABCD approach you can place the nasogastric tube to decompress and immediately refer to the surgery but remember do not use the positive pressure ventilation if needed you can intubate the patient but do not use the positive pressure ventilation then move to the next question in this question one scenario was given about the young female found unconsciousness at home and she was uh, she was found with the multi -ta multiple tablets that is antidepressant like uh, amitriptyline and uh, ask the diagnosis so unconscious person with the amitriptyline you can clearly make out the diagnosis TCA poisoning you ask the what were the ECG finding found in the diagnosis so ECG finding you can make over here like QRS voidening terminal R wave, S wave in 1 and AVL, tachycardia, PR prolongation, first degree heart block. This finding present in the TCA poisoning. So what drug you will use if hypotension refractory to the fluids? You can use soda bicarb that is 1 to 2 milliequivalent per kilogram ebolus followed by the 3 to 4 milliequivalent per kilogram per hour IV infusion. Third, what drug you will use if the hypotension refractory to fluid? You can use the same soda bicarb. How will you manage the scissors in this patient? So you can use the benzodiazepine like midazolam. Then move to the next question. Question number 17. In question number 17, the case scenario given and ECG given as. And in this, in this scenario, ask the diagnosis. The answer was like unstable ventricular tachycardia unstable because what in this case scenario the GCS was on the lower side so this point while solving the question you have to note down that ventricular tachycardia is there in ECG but GCS on the lower side so that is that is suggestive of the unstable ventricular tachycardia there are multiple uh, points of the hemodynamic unstable like hypertension chest discomfort altered sensorium signs of shock reduce, reduce uh, urine output so based on this you can make the Patient is whether immunotherapy stable or unstable. So the ECS suggests of ventricular tachycardia and because of the low GCS, it is, he is unstable ventricular tachycardia and management here you can simply give the synchronized cardio version with 100 joule. So this is the management. Then move to the next question. In this question, one X-ray was given, the X-ray of the wrist, AP view, PA view and X-ray finding asks. So in this you can see the Terry Thomas sign that is increased distance between the scapoid and lulent bone. The gilula arc not maintained. Second diagnosis that is scapulonate dislocation that is called as perilunate dislocation type 1. Then move to the next question. <coughs> question number 19. One image given as shown. Okay you can see the image over here. Image given as the device used in this image. So answer is simple, high flow nasal cannula, HFNC. The second question, what dependent flow rates can be used in the adult for the ventilation? The maximum uh, flow rates you can use the 5 to 6 liter, 5 to 60 liter per minute oxygen. Third question, maximum flow and FIO2 by this device. Maximum flow you can give the 60 liter per minute and maximum FIO2 approximately 100% you can give, max 100% FIO2 you can give. And fourth question, advantage of this device, advantages are like patient compatible, that is most important, then heating, humidification, airway hydration, high flow rate can be maintained, high FIO2 can be given, wash out of the dead space, and when the mouth is closed, peep can be maintained. So these are the advantages of the HFNC. Then move to the next question. One case scenario was given, and image one image given about the penile swelling and ask the diagnosis based on based on the clinical scenario on the uh, image our diagnosis was nephrotic syndrome the second question was ask the disease of the penile swelling so this could be the angioedema cellulitis toxic shock syndrome staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome because of the trauma it could be because of the nephrotic syndrome that was the, our primary diagnosis and ask the management so we have to treat the whatever the underlying cause then move to the next question in this question, one ABG was given and asked for the interpretation. So in that case, the, our interpretation was Hagma plus Nagma. So move to the next question. One case scenario of the pediatric patient with the image given of the grey patch on the right tonsil and ask the possible diagnosis. Here you can see the image. 
the possible diagnosis was gaps group a beta hemolytic streptococci that is pharyngitis uh, the two dds diphtheria peritonsillar abscess after two days of the pa- uh, two days the patient having red colored urine now what investigation will you do we can use a send the urine routine micro for the post post we can suspect the post streptococcal glomerular nephritis psgm and fourth what is the finding on the microscopic evaluation so you can see the rbc cast then uh, 23rd 24 and 25 25 question we are not able to remember so these were the 25 questions asked in the oski so i hope you will uh, you you got the idea about the oski pattern how the questions are framed what kind of the answer should be written so basically the the idea about making this ppt to help for the new oski based question patterns so without wasting time uh, i will give the idea about the examination pattern and how to prepare for the examination that conducted during the our time but remember whatever the current uh, changes are there you have to uh, you, you will get the from you will get from the nb side so be updated okay but we will discuss about the our exam pattern in short so single day exam having the four main component oski component 25 questions of the 6 mark each and 150 marks why wow was component four each uh, 10 marks 40 marks then ward round four ward round that is for the 10 for each and 40 marks the clinical examination two cases 30 each 35 marks and uh, total 300 marking were there and you have to pa- for the passing criteria you have to get you should get the 150 out of minimum 150 out of 300 so why wow was component syllabus medical and surgical emergencies pediatric and obgy emergencies drugs you can remember the emergency medicine drug indication contraindication doses and you have to you you should aware of the all the instrument which use in the emergency then recent advances St- student also should aware of the abg how to read the abg interpret abg ecg finding x ray ct mri focus reading then you should get master in bls sls atls pals nrp or to joint examination and communication skill very important that is very important in emergency then ward round uh, the real patient or healthy volunteer may be po- provided clinical case examination 35 mark for each one standard case for provided by the nb this year our long case was on stroke the other clinical case will be arranged by the respective center okay so the, this was the pattern for our examination during the september 2021 but you should be updated the what are the new changes over there in our current uh, current uh, clinical examination so you will get the idea about the nb so purpose of making for that uh, this ppt to get the idea about the oski pattern and the clinical examination examination in short how to prepare for the uh, practical examination so all the all the best for everyone you can i hope you can do very well and study hard study well don't worry about anything all the best thank you thank you for listening